Welcome back, America. Hugh Hewitt from Inside the Beltway with Speaker Kevin McCarthy on my left, which is very unusual. He's usually on my right. Mr. Speaker, welcome. Good morning. Thank you for joining me. Uh, I just asked Ron DeSantis, if we get the House, you keep the House, you build your majority. Mitch McConnell gets the Senate. A Republican wins. You get a reconciliation. You get a big swing. What do you want in the big swing in 2025? Well, I view there's three macro issues for America to, to, that we have to be able to come with. The size of our debt, which means the size of government and where it's growing. We are well beyond that 50-year average of expenditures. I mean, normally we're at 21% of GDP. The Democrats have made us up to 24. We will collapse if we don't get a hold of our fiscal house. I think China is our threat in the future. You have this new axis of power that's being created with Iran, Russia, and North Korea. If you have your debt out of control, you can't take control of that. You've got to be strong home economically to do everything else. And then if it comes to energy, you've got to think of energy, not just to lower the cost for all Americans, but geopolitically. What would the world look like if the world was dependent on our natural gas. If we just replaced Russian natural gas in Europe for one year, we would have lowered CO2 emissions by 218 million tons. That's in one year. But think if China was dependent upon us. That would determine a lot of factors too. We would be economically stronger. The world would be from an environmental place in a better place, but also I think politically the, the world would be a safer place because we could control more of um, where the environment's at. Our allies would be stronger, but our adversaries would be dependent upon. Can all of that get into one reconciliation bill? Yes, very much so. We've already passed H.R. 1. And um, one, thank you for being here. This is the conservative um, policy form that I try to take people from ar around the country who care about conservative policy to come here to Washington while we're in session and we got members coming over to talk foreign policy, talk economics, talk elections as well, but we'll have a whole discussion on energy because it's an energy not just determinant about our energy policy itself, it's our economy, but it's also geopolitical the way it should be looked at. Now, this is from left field, but you're an you're a agricultural guy. I yes. mean, you're from the Central Valley. We have the most water we've ever had since I moved to California in 1978. Have the Democrats done anything to capture the water? No, they actually fought us on it. Gavin Newsom actually used the state to go after the feds. During the last administration, we started to invest to, to raise Shasta just a couple feet is the greatest return on the investment. We've been studying it for two decades. I finally got it in a bipartisan way to pass to be able to move forward federally. And you know who sued it to stop it? The state. He, Gavin Newsom has done everything in his power not to be able to store water in one of these rainy seasons, snowpack. You look at Tahoe, still has snow to this day. We're, we're, we're flushing water out to the ocean. Then they talk about creating a desalization plant where this fresh water goes into salt water and trying to bring it back instead of storing it for the years in the future where we will have another drought. But why don't we store it during these snowpack years and they continue to fight us and that's why people are leaving the state. And the Republican Policy Forum, which you're hosting, and I'm happy to participate in, the buzz in the hallway is that Gavin Newsom will be the nominee of the Democratic Party, that it's not going to be Kamala Harris. And you just negotiated with President Biden. Do you see him actually running for president? I think it's going to be difficult for him. I don't think he could put the time in. You know, when, when you're out campaigning, you're on the road and you're running a country, it takes a lot out of you. Um, I just don't see the same vigor that I saw years past. Okay, now let's talk about, you did 200, year, 200 days on the road last year. Yes. What, what are you going to do this? I mean, how do you top that in terms of bringing candidates and how's the recruitment going to keep the House majority and grow it? You know, the recruitment has really improved after each election. I, I've been leader for two election cycles. And in that election cycle, we've been able to win both times. We won the majority, but only by five seats. We want to be able to expand that, and we can. But when you look at the quality of the candidates, we picked up five seats in California, five in New York, while at the same time the Senate lost two cycles. We lost the presidency. We shrunk in governors. We shrunk in legislatures. Why the quality of our candidates? Look at Juan Siscomani in Arizona, Lori Chavez Dreamer in Oregon. I mean, we're winning in states people don't think about. You look at Lawler, Leilota, um, Diaz-Pacito, all in New York. I mean, these are places we normally don't. It's the quality of the candidates themselves. We have won 
when you look at where we are, we have elected more women. You look at young Kim Michelle Steele, just so impressive. We've won more women, more Hispanic Republicans, more black Republicans since Reconstruction, and we're just growing. What do you do with Steve Daines, who wants to come and grab Mike Gallagher, who I just told him, so glad he's not <laughs> running for Senate. But you know, they're going to want, want Siskamani to run for Senate. And we don't want him to run for Senate. We want them to stay in the House and be men and women of the House. I, I, I think, you know, eventually, I think others will run and rightfully so steve dane started in the house you know yeah. tom cotton started in the house tim scott started in the house a lot of these stars started in the house and that's that's the minor league team to the majors but you also want them to get their bats in. you want them to get their plays and you want to be able to go and i'm so thankful that gallagher made the decision but really why People want to be able to achieve things. The position that Gallagher is in right now, by being the chair of the Select Committee on China, he doesn't care where he's serving. I think he wants to serve you in know, that capacity. Mr. Speaker, this is the most important thing you've done. Yep. I know the debt limit mattered a lot. Yep. I know a lot of stuff mattered a lot. Getting the focus on China. I don't know if you feel that, but I think it's waking up America. And I think Gallagher and the Democrats on that committee are helping. I'm very impressed with uh, the work that Democrats are doing on that committee, how well we are working together. You know, I, I try to treat Hakeem Jeffries the way I wanted to be treated. You should respect individuals and leaders on other sides. You should find ways, especially I think the places that we have failed when it comes to China is that we've never spoken with one voice as a nation. We go from administration to administration. I really came up with this idea by walking the graves of Normandy at the 75th anniversary and I happened to be with Nancy Pelosi. And when I looked out there I thought all the names from the crosses to the stars of David, they're all young men, all died at the same time period. What could the policies makers have done prior so that day never take place? When I thought about it, I, I reached to then Speaker Pelosi and I said, why don't we create this commission? It took me eight months to get them to agree, and then we had the Washington Post in to come interview us right before we were going to announce they backed away because COVID hit and they thought it'd be political. So when I became Speaker, it's one of the first things I sat down with Hakeem, even before the vote for Speaker, I said, this is what I want to create, this is what I want to do, I'll show you the names of who I want to appoint on the Republican side, because I want you to know the seriousness of which I think about this. I want you to appoint the same type of caliber of candidates from your party. And it has really been, I think, an eye-opening to a lot of people to see how we work together. You know, when that balloon came over, a lot of people wanted to do some resolution just attacking the president. And I said, that's not our audience. The CCP is our audience. Hakeem and I got together and one day drafted a resolution, put it on the floor, and every single member of Congress, Republican and Democrat, voted for it. And the first person to attack us was the Communist Party of China. It win. Went, it went directly within 30 minutes. That's a win. So, Mr. Speaker, last question. In terms of keeping the focus on China and getting defense spending up, is that in the first big swing in reconciliation? Maybe. It's got to be, but it, you also have to think like this. It can't just be spending. It's, it's how we're building. We have to rebuild our manufacturing base here. And not only can we do that with what's happening in Ukraine, we can rebuild, take our um, procurement within the military, which the Pentagon is big, but it's becoming like the IBMs. We need to become the Silicon Valley. We need to find how we can, we can create some of these weapons faster. Um, we can rebuild our manufacturing base, sell it to our allies, while at the same time rebuilding ours, but at a cheaper rate because we have this manufacturing base here. And what we're finding in Ukraine and everywhere else, technology to the weaponry goes further. I mean, there, there, there was just a few years ago, a lot of people would debate whether the Russian tank was superior to the American tank, and you have a guy in California in his garage that just developed a weapon uh, that a switchblade for $5,000 makes the Russian tank a coffin. You know, the, the, there are the ingenuity of the Silicon Valley. There are so many former people who served in the military, Navy SEALs and others, who have such high technology background, but they die within that valley of death, that five year of trying to get the procurement within the Pentagon. We need to reshape the Pentagon to be more effective, more efficient, and really think like a startup. I think our money will go further, and that's very important to what we do in the future as well. Speaker Kevin McCarthy, thanks for having me to the Conservative Forum. Continued good luck in recruitment and fundraising. Win Red, right? Win Red, Win red is where to go. Yes. That's where to go. Thank you for joining me. Thank you.